uh, the protagonist has met a very sexy uh, security guard in her place of business and um, starts to flirt with him. He invites her back to uh, his office to talk. Uh, I'm going back to the office, he said. Come back there in two minutes. I'll see you coming on the camera and let you in. I'll be waiting for you. And then he walked off. I was near breathless. The security office is a semi-secluded spot, the very back near one of the time clocks. There's usually a guard standing at the opening of the hallway, but there was no one there at the moment. No one would notice a woman going into the security office and taking a tad too long to come out. But then when the people started to look for me, the last thing I needed was for someone to find me there and in a compromising position nonetheless. I didn't go, but I wanted to. Trust me, I did. E.K. came back sometime later. I guess I wasn't enticing enough, he said. It's not that, it's just that there are eyes everywhere and this is a very dangerous place for a tryst. I, didn't, I did have to think practically after all. I've done some crazy things for Dick, but I wasn't about to add losing my job to the list. I know, he said, but it just adds the excitement. I didn't say anything, just looked at him. If you'd come just now, you'd be back already. I'll go back and wait for you. He walked away. I looked at the time. It was 8.30 and I did need to go on a break. I walked to the time clock to punch out. There was a woman standing there reading a paper. I recognized her, Deborah. She said hello to me. I said hello back and then walked to find some food. Too close for comfort. It wasn't meant to be. I went to get some food, but I didn't eat it. Something told me to put it down and go back to the time clock. I went to the time clock under the pretense of wanting to check my punches. No, Deborah. No one to see me casually walk over to the security office door. I took a step. I stopped. I kept going. I came to the front of the door. It opened. I went inside. The door closed behind me. Instantly, I was swept into an embrace by a pair of big, strong arms. Before I could say anything, his lips were on mine. He started undoing my buttons. He had his lips on my nipples before I'd even realized my bra was unhooked. I moaned. His hands were on my fly, undoing the buttons on my new jeans. Are you wet right now? I've been wet since you entered the building. His hand was between my legs, as if making sure I'm not telling a lie. <coughs> Sorry. Mm, he said. <laughs> there <was> flashbacks. <laughs> Mm, he said, licking his fingers. In one quick motion, he turned me around and bent me over the table. I felt his dick rub against my lips. Then I felt him enter me. He stroked only a few times and then pulled out and sat down. He tied his sweatpants back up. And I redid my buttons. I smiled. Did you accomplish what you wanted during this brief visit, I asked. It was a lovely preview. He then asked for my number. I gave it to him and chuckled to myself. <laughs> Usually you give the guy your number before you let him stick his dick in you, not the other way around. <laughs> I watched on the camera for the coast to be clear and then left the office. Okay, so I'm gonna skip ahead here and um, there was some more sex and then we find out that um, EK not only has a girlfriend, but his girlfriend also works security in the same place. No! Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> In the middle of the movie, my phone started to vibrate. It was EK, so I excused myself and took the call. Did she approach you today? She works today? Yes. He then describes her. Ring a bell? I felt like he'd knocked the wind out of me. It was her the whole time. Yes, it rings a bell. Claudia, that's not really her name, but like I called her Claudia any, you know, just because I didn't know her name. Um, <laughs> Claudia had made me, she knew who I was, and she had a gun on our hip today. What? Well, because the security people were like always like ex-cops or corrections officers, so they were like to carry guns, yeah. Uh, fuck. And then I saw it, my life flashing before my eyes. I was going to get shot. I started wondering which I prefer, her shooting me or her causing me to lose my job. Uh, I got to work the next day before Claudia did. I didn't see her for maybe the first three hours of my shift, even though I knew she was there. Once she came out of her hiding place, she circled me like a shark for the rest of the night. The first time I saw her, her face scared me. She looked angry, hurt. She looked like she wanted to kill somebody, looking more murderous each time I saw her, but thankfully there were always people around me. I could almost hear the Jaws theme music playing in my head. <clears throat> 
The dirty looks continued for a while, and even still I'd heard that E.K. had asked for me. I wasn't trying to get caught anywhere near him, and I thought he'd feel the same. He didn't. He called and tried to see me again. This is how he earned the nickname Evil Knievel, because he was a daredevil. My daredeviling days, on the other hand, were over. Uh, the situation was blowing over, uh, and after a couple of weeks, I relaxed a little. That is, until 1 a.m. one night when I get a phone call. It was a friend from work. You sleeping? Yeah. Well, wake up. We need to talk. The tone of her voice wiped all traces of sleep from me. Whatever it was, it surely wasn't good. Okay, what's up? I don't know what, if anything, happened between you and Hoffman. I don't want to know, but you need to know that one of the security guards told Belinda about it. Belinda was the big boss. Very nice woman, but was also trigger happy with a pink slip. My stomach fell through the floor, what? And then she went on to explain. My coworker's boyfriend worked in the building overnight and he was cool with Belinda. Apparently, Belinda related to him the entire story that one of the security guards related to her. He then related it to his girlfriend who was now relating it to me. Story went something like this. Did you hear about so-and-so? No, what? Well, so-and-so fucked Casey Offman in the security office and then his girlfriend found out about it. You know the rest. Later on, the guard would claim that she thought Belinda knew about it already and that it was just innocent girl talk and that she didn't mean to cause any trouble. I wasn't convinced. I was certain that Claudia had put her up to it. I sweated bullets the entire next day at work and every day thereafter. Nothing happened, but still I was uneasy. Belinda wouldn't listen to this hearsay, would she? The day before I went on vacation, I heard Belinda's voice over the system paging my supervisor. Uh, he called her back and then I heard him say, yes, she is, and then hang up the phone. Then I heard her page me. I dialed her extension. Come to my office, please, was all she said. This was it, my last walk, and I'm gonna stop there. No!